Hey everyone. I've had a couple of requests to do a video on these Ranger 570 full sizes after we've had them here about 16 months now. Uh, we've got three of these machines. Um, most of them, I, I'd say we've got one that's got around 1150 hours. Uh, this one's got around 800, 900. The other one's got similar hours. So after two of the hardest winters we've had in about 10 years, these machines have held up quite well. And I'm just going to go through some pros and cons of this machine in particular, um, since that's what I've had a request for. So I've got my list here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go through the cons first. First one, and largest in my mind, is the air inlet. This is where the air inlet is for the CVT box and the air engine intake air. That's where they both get their, their air from. And it is a problem because of the dirt that gets pushed back here from off the front wheels. They suck in a lot of dirt into the clutch box. They suck in a lot of dirt into the engine air filter. I will put an air filter on these every probably couple hundred of hours, which is way more than I have with any other machine I've owned. And that's mainly because of that inlet location. Also, the primary clutch failures we've had on these at about eight or nine hundred hours, seven hundred hours, um, is because the dirt is getting behind the buttons and pushing the but buttons out of the pockets. That's all happening because the dirt's going in into the clutch box. This is a this is an engineering hack job where they didn't want to spend the extra money to run the intake piping up to the front the way they have in the past. It's a proven design in the past. This was a way to produce it cheaper. And even the 900s have the air intake up here a little higher. Still not a good deal. I think the thousands they've went back to the front, which they knew was the right place for it. But uh, th that is a hang up I have with these. Um, next thing, the open frontal area on these, up under the, up under the fender well here, it's all open. If you've had 800 or 900, you know that there's inner fender wells on those. And the reason I don't like it is because I can get snow and ice up behind that fan shroud and it can stop the fan from turning. And you won't know it until you start smelling the burning motor because it's trying to kick the fan on. That's, that's a problem <clears throat> that you gotta be conscious of. Again, up under here, no inner fenders, which is part of why it's the economy model, right? So. I had to wrap my heater in a foam mat to try to keep the snow and mud off of it. My wiring harnesses are getting mud on them. Again, not a deal breaker, but it's kind of irritating. Not the end of the world, but it's something, yeah, you're going to save some money, but you're going to have to deal with this, okay? So be aware of that. <clears throat> um, no power steering offered on this model. It is not... You can't get them with power steering. You can't get power steering kits from Polaris for this model. I got mine through Super ATV for all three machines. They're about 600 a piece. I put them in myself. Made much better machines out of them. Um, also on these, there is no gated shifter available. <clears throat> and if you know what a gated shifter is, where you go from high, you can go all the way to reverse, and it stops, and then you can go over and down to park. So if you want to do a quick shift from high to reverse, like some of us do in agriculture when we're chasing livestock, this one, you can go all the way to park, and boy, does that shut you down in a hurry. And my dealer has told me they actually have broken some chains off in, in the transmission with guys that have done that, and that's not covered under warranty, so be aware of that. And it is something that you'll get better at doing, as you own it. I mean, it hasn't been a problem for us. It's just more of an irritation. Um, the other thing is there's no hard cab offered for these. Um, this is a Polaris Pro Steel cab. We took off the 800s that when we sold them. It fits pretty good without modifications. It was one of the big perks of going to this model is that we could reuse the cabs. Big savings. Um, Sidebysidestuff.com sells a hard cab. I don't know how good it is. It's 2500 which is about half of what you'll spend for a Polaris hard cab for a 900. So, 
you know, you have options, but Polaris, this is the red-headed stepchild. They don't want to offer too much for this machine because it would take away from their 900 line, in my opinion. Um, next thing, uh, this, the turning radius is a little poor on this. It's a wider turn because of the McPherson struts up front. Um, also, that rides just a tad rougher, no, noticeably rougher from factory than an 800 does. Not a deal breaker again, but something you'll notice when you go to turn sharp to chase something. You'll notice it doesn't quite have as much turning maneuverability. Uh, not a big deal, just something to be aware of. But uh, uh, another thing would be um, the spark plug boot in the back. Not long after we bought these, the first winter we went into, we had a lot of slush, and there's the coil and spark plug boot right directly ahead of the rear tire. Great job, engineers. That is a crucial piece of equipment for the engine, and we put it in one of the most hostile places on the machine as far as getting beat up by rocks and getting wet. So I took the boots on these, filled them with dielectric grease so water couldn't get in, put them back on. I haven't had any trouble since, but you might. Um, another thing on these prop shafts, really grease the prop shaft yokes on these because for whatever reason, these seem to get sloppy pretty fast. After owning these things for a year and a half now, on all three machines, they have warranted primary clutches and prop shafts. And the prop shafts are because of that yoke getting sloppy. Don't know why. I've never had a Polaris yoke problem before. I always grease my machines well, but that problem has cropped up on all three. <clears throat> New prop shafts seem to take care of most of the slop, and I just really grease them, grease them hard. Um, these machines are a little noisier because they are a single cylinder uh, unit compared to a twin. They are noisier, they're raspier. I thought it would be a problem for the livestock. They don't care. They, they learn to know what the noise is of these machines regardless of what they are. So they'll either come to you or run from you, whatever they're kind of programmed to do. But it is a little noisier. Um, now in the cab, they are quieter than the 800 because they've moved the, they moved the weight back, the engine's farther back. Um, another thing, and probably the last thing, or close to the last thing, is the, the fuel economy. These were touted as getting, you know, mid-25 mile per gallon range. It's supposed to be way better than the 800, and for idling around and stuff, they are better. They're noticeably better. Normal use, driving, trailing around, going up and down the road, eh, it's not that much better. 5%, 10%, maybe. Maybe. I think part of that is because of the hard cab, the extra weight of the hard cab that we got on these. Part of it is... These engines produce 45 horsepower, which is almost as much as the 800s. So, capacity-wise, they're not burning that much less fuel. Um, now, the heater isn't quite as good on these machines, even though it's the same heater as on my 800s, because these engines, when you're idling around in cold weather, they don't produce a lot of engine coolant temperature, which doesn't produce a lot of temperature for the for the heater to put in through the vents and into the cab. So. Your heaters aren't going to be as good on these if you're coming from an 800. They're just not. Um, maybe the last thing here. Radiator fill cap. Right there. Right under that piece of plastic. You, it is almost impossible to fill this radiator without drilling a hole in there with a hole saw. It is idiotic. I don't know what they were thinking, but I don't know if they took this radiator out of a player sportsman and you know made it fit or what but that is the best way to take care of that problem so i'm going to do a separate video here on the pros of this machine and i think i covered all the problems again not a lot of problems not a lot of them are even deal breakers but that is the issues i have noticed so far with these Polaris ranger 570 full sizes